If you got your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, a very familiar scripture. I wasn't going to preach this tonight. I had something else in mind. I went before the Lord today and I said, uh, well, uh, he said, I want you to preach the theme I gave you for such a time as this. I personally believe we're in the days of Noah. Yes. The Bible says it wasn't the day of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man shall come. My, if my throat sounds a little raspy, I've been preaching. Like, hey, Derek, I just know you. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And um, so I got a little bit of what I call Pentecostal scratch. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that's what you call it anyway. <laughs> Praise God. And he said something kind of odd to me. He said, I want you to preach this because my warehouses are full of stuff. Yeah. Waiting for somebody to ask me for it that I am a creator and I'd like my people to empty them out spiritually, physically, financially, all three, so I can put new stuff in it. Because that's my nature is to create and I will never stop. I need a people that has the guts to ask me. In 2 uh, 2 Kings chapter four, it's really amazing that the people here at uh, KCBC and all the people that work for Kenneth Copeland Ministry. Actually, you work for a prophet. Yes. You work for a prophet's ministry. Yep. Yep. Not just a ministry, a biblical, a prophet's ministry. Elisha worked for a prophet's ministry under the prophet Elijah and then built further the prophetic ministry of Elijah into Elisha's. And it was just really amazing. I told the people in my first thing that when uh, Elijah says, uh, what shall I do for thee? And Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit. He didn't say, I want a double portion of your anointing. Or a double portion of your intelligence. He knew he needed that spirit. And where that spirit is, there's liberty. Well, then he goes in and starts the prophetic mission. And there was conditions to meeting it. Well, if you see me go up. And everybody was trying to stop him. The prophets of Bethel and the prophets of Jericho. Yet they were saying the same thing. We as the body of Christ need to say the same thing. If we're going to change the world, we got to say the same thing. We can have different opinions of homiletical, hermeneutical, philosophical, theological thought. I am a doctor of divinity. I have three degrees. God's been so good and gracious to us. But you know what? To touch people. That's the reason why God sent his only begotten son. I've said it so many times, people laugh about it, but I'm serious about it. When we get to heaven, you're not going to have an angel dropping grapes on you in your mouth as as he flies by. (laughs) It's a place of great work. So in 2 Kings chapter 4, well, let me just say this. I have many conversations with God. I like that. I like to know. I want to know some things and and, and, uh, I pray, and when I pray, I ask for those things. But in my conversations, I just like, hello, Jesus. Hi, Jesse. We just discuss things of the world and things that have passed and present and future. And I have such a wonderful time that may hours go by. And it's just such a blessing of the Lord that he would spend that much time with me. He'll spend more time than if you would let him. Yes. Well, when I started, uh, 2021, the Lord said, this is the theme you're going to tell people. What shall I do for thee? Why are people being so limited with me when I'm El Shaddai, the God that's more than an us? It's amazing. I think some churches think that you can break God, that you might give him too much work and he can't handle it. Elisha here says in second Kings chapter four, verse one. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha saying, thy servant, my husband is dead. Notice the woman. I want to let you know something. Thy servant, he worked for you. My husband is dead. And thou knowest that thou servant did fear the Lord or respect God. And the creditor, 
Now that was his weakness. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. That man was a wonderful prophet named Obadiah. He wrote a whole book in the Bible, but he wasn't very good with finances. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of people can preach the gospel and they ain't got a lick of sense when it comes to business. And I don't care how much anointing you got, if you don't have good business tactics, you are awaiting bankruptcy. Mark my words. God gives you a mind to think and learn. And Obadiah had a problem and left his wife in debt to the point that they're going to sell, they're going to grab his boys and sell them. Notice what verse two says. And Elisha said unto her, now most people, if that would happen today, they would have said this. Now, sweetheart, you know, we just can't give you a bunch of money. We'll send some flowers and try to help you as much as we can. But at the end of that, but he's been under the ministry of Elijah. So he didn't care what she would say. Now, why did Obadiah make that mistake? Because he did not listen to Elisha. You can be under a ministry and not receive things that you're supposed to receive. And it will show up in areas of your life when God puts you there to listen and to obey. So you can take what that is and then God will use it with your talent to the next generation. Elisha said, what shall I do for thee? Does that sound like a broke man? That, that, does that sound like a man with no faith? He said, what shall I do for thee? And then he said, what do you have in your house? Because he knew God's system of sowing and reaping. As long as the earth rain, seed time, harvest time, sowing and reaping, it goes across the human kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, the animal kingdom. Everything's done by sowing and reaping. Just the way it is, that's God's way of doing things. What shall I do for thee? And God is asking you today, what shall I do for thee? When will you take the limits off of God? Who put those chains of bondage on you? And you liked them so much, you made them jewelry. Well, I know God could do anything, but will he? See, that's bondage and chains that's become jewelry to you. When you're still tied to something you should not be tied to. What Paul said, though I'm bound with this chain, the word of God's not bound. He didn't make that chain a piece of jewelry. What shall I do for thee? So I, I want to teach this tonight if I can, because I send this to all our partners of our ministry. And the Lord told me to write 12 partner letters concerning this. And, I, and I'm doing that. Different scenes where God said, please, just ask me something. And yet people get a little nervous about that, you know. So write this down. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. You know why <laughs> you don't have enough money? I'm going to tell you why. Because you don't know how much you want. Mm. You just know how much you need. Mm. And I don't know why you're worried about need when the Bible said explicitly he would supply how many need? Oh. How many need? Oh. How many need? Oh. Well, then why don't you just quit asking for need yes. since he said he'd supply it and start getting over to the want level? I had one man say, well, I want 10 million. I said, you can't even handle $10. How are you going to handle 10 million? See, that's ignorance going to seed there. The reason why people struggle find that they don't know how much money they want. They never let their spirit transform their mind in an economic world so they can get what they want. Is the Lord your shepherd? Yes. Is the Lord your shepherd? Yes. Or let's get black with it. Is the Lord your shepherd? Yes. Well, then you shall not want. Why are you mad at me? Because I don't want nothing. Why is everybody mad at me? Because I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going in. It ain't my fault because I know what I want, yes, sir. Yes, sir. not what I need. Right. Kathy never tells me she's got a need. That's already supplied. Mm -hmm. She just goes get what she wants, which is okay. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. See, 
do you have the capacity to receive what you're believing for? Because it's going to take great faith to build that warehouse for you. God is waiting for somebody just to say something so he can bless it. Write this down. Your blessings are often tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. Your blessings is uh, often tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. What are you willing to declare? Isaiah 119. Yes. If you be willing. You'd be surprised how many people are not willing. Yep. If you be willing, then the next statement, the next level, and obedient. You will eat the good of the land. If you just be willing. You'd be surprised how many people will. Well, I don't want to get too much because I don't want to get greedy. Who told you you'd be greedy? Why don't you trust the God that said, ask of me and I'll give you the nations. Yes. Why don't you say to that mountain, be thou removed? Why are you waiting for God to say it? It's not his mountain. It's yours. Delight yourself. Therefore, in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart, not his heart. He's waiting for you to find out what is the delight of your heart. And it's amazing. Man, I tell you, people, there should be no financial trouble at all in any church or any Christian's home. When we serve a God that's so uniquely, absolute uniqueness of him. You see, your blessing is often tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. Well, when I got, when I, when I've been down in three airplanes, I decided that I needed a plane so someone else wouldn't kill me. I'm sitting in the back and I got to put my life in these people's hands. I want to know these people. And I knew I'd get persecution. And y'all know it, boy. They, they slammed me and Kenneth like crazy. You think we care? We just buy another jet. Oh, that made somebody mad, Lord Jesus. Oh, what, 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 you may need a ride one day. I had a man tell me one time, Derek, it was so funny. He said, man, I never thought you'd ever get one of them. Man, you need to give me a ride. I said, you don't never ride that plane, you bunch of doubt and unbelief fool. You think I'm going to put doubt in my plane? You fought me like crazy over this thing. He said, well, forgive me. I said, well, if you repent, I will. But I could tell he wouldn't. He wouldn't. Uh-uh. He just wanted to experience the ride. You can't experience the ride of something like that unless you're willing and obedient. To do what God says. Right. You see, your blessings are often tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. So if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So when Kathy goes shopping, I, I don't know what she wants. Or that, I just tell her, go get the thing. Or if I want something, I just go get it. I mean, just whatever. I don't want many things because I have everything I can think of. I don't know. I mean, I guess I could get something. I just don't know. Sometimes <clears throat> it's my birthday and Kathy said, let me buy you something. I said, well, I don't want nothing. Well, you, well, you going to go buy and get nothing? No, but if I see something, or if, I don't know. I, I love artwork. I got all kind of artwork. Oh, Lord. I don't know where I got that taste at because I was raised very, very poor. Outhouses. Remember you used to have to run outside the house? We had an outhouse by, by a railroad track with no roof on it. <laughs> Mama said, make sure the train ain't coming because I got to go to the outhouse. Because those guys would look, try to look at the outhouse. Try to look at the outhouse. I'll never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. Now, the reason why I said the, the reason why you don't have enough money because you don't know what you want or how much you want. Listen to this point. I don't know limits you in life and causes you to live in lack. Not knowing will cause a delay in your blessing. I don't know limits you in life and causes you to live in lack. Not knowing will cause a delay in your blessing. Second Timothy chapter one, verse 12. For I know in whom I have believed, past tense, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep, watch this, not what he commits to me, what I commit to him. Amen. What is your commitment? What do you know about your commitment? Why are you here? Why did God put you on this planet? How did you get here? Your mom and dad sowed some seed. <laughs> it's a fact, ladies and gentlemen, whether you like it or not, they did it. Yeah. And you are the product 
of that sowing. But why were you put on this planet? I'll tell you why. Because what you do here determines what you'll be and what you'll do when you get there. God is looking to fill positions in heaven, in the heavenly heaven, in the new heaven and the new earth. He tried it with angels and they blew it. Lucifer was the head of earth. And he didn't sin in heaven. He sinned on earth. He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt myself above the most high God. I will sit in the congregation congregation of the Lord. Who was he ruling and reigning here? If we could excavate the bottom ocean's floors, we'd find those class of whatever it was. And now scientists say it looks like all planets that once seem like the ones we know of could, could, at one time was inhabited. It was until that war took place. Where is God going to send you? Because what you do here determines what you'll be and what you do when you get there. So he said, now nah, I'm going to mankind. Watch it. He gave Adam Lucifer's old job, which made Lucifer mad as I want it. <laughs> and he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. It's yours. Everything you put your hand on will prosper. Just be willing and obedient. Now, Adam, I got to give Adam this. Adam never once looked at the tree of life or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The first person to begin to develop the senses was Eve. That's why women are more sensitive than men. They're ahead of us. Okay, you don't believe that. Let's go over here. (laughs) They're ahead of us. She began to look at that tree. She shouldn't have done that. Not that she was bad. And Adam come walking up. And all he could see was her. By that time, man, Satan, I mean, he's, he's got her thinking, see, in the solar shrimp, in the mind, in the will, and in the emotion. Yep. Of course, you know the story, sin fell. And of course, Adam, he knew if I do this, if she goes, I got to go with her. I just, I, I can't exist without her. So you can exist without God. See, there was a choice made there. You see what I'm saying? Then he blamed the woman. It's that woman you gave me made me do it. I can understand that. I can understand that perfectly. I'm not looking over there. I'm looking right here. I don't know limits you in life and causes you to live in lack. Not knowing what cause a delay in your blessing. But how you know you're going to get it? Write this word down. Persistency. If you persistent, boy, persistency in asking never fails to open the floodgates of God's power to you. Persistency in asking never fails to open the floodgates of God's power to you. See, persistence is very powerful. If that kid wants that cookie, he going to drive his mama nuts until he gets it. And if he can't get it from mama, he definitely can get it from grandma. Because she's going to send him home with a sugar high. It's payback time. Persistent. That's why I married Kathy. She just kept asking me to marry her. (laughs) She don't believe that, but that's the truth, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) But we're not going to go there. But it's true, Kathy. But anyway, (laughs) You should have seen me when I was young. I'd have married myself. I was a good looking boy. <laughs> Butch, I was a good looking boy. I was, I had a body, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Couldn't grab my skin. Woo, six pack. Got a whole keg in a, and I got a keg in a <laughs> warehouse. <laughs> You grab me anywhere, you can hang on now because there's stuff everywhere. <laughs> but not in them days, Derek. Oh, no, not in them days. <laughs> Kathy would tell me, Jesse, be at the beach. This is when we were young. Put your shirt on. I said, we're at the beach. She said, too many people looking at you. I was ripped. Now <laughs> she tells me, Jesse, don't take that shirt off. <laughs> I said, okay, I, I ain't taking it off. I ain't taking it off. What do you tell her? Nothing. 
Persistency. <laughs> Write this down. Don't let the fear of choosing make you choose nothing. Mm. See, that's the problem with a lot of people. They have a fear of choosing something, Keith, and, and, and by doing that, they don't choose nothing. Why? You need something. You want something. Prove it to people that you won't be greedy. Believe for the hundredfold right. and get it. And they're going to say, what are you going to do? And same thing you did before you didn't have it. You're not going to be greedy. You're just going to listen to what God says. Don't let the fear of choosing make you choose nothing. You'd be surprised how many people won't do nothing because they're afraid to choose something. You see what I'm saying? But, but I don't know what to choose. What do you mean you don't know what to choose? Write this down. I don't know is sometimes an excuse to just stay where you are. I don't know is, oh Lord, sometimes an excuse to just stay where you are. So pick and stick. Pick and stick. That's Psalms 84 verse 11. Go read it. Pick and stick. Pick something. Stick with it. You know, Derek here is a great actor. You could probably be an actor all your life, right? You know why? First, you're talented, and we know that. You pick and stick. See? And people know that, so they give you parts. And you play that, quote, character. You see what I'm saying? See, I don't know if sometimes an excuse to just stay where you are. I, I, I had some people say, well, man, I'm afraid to kind of make that investment. Then for God's sake, don't, because you're going to lose it all. Pick and stick. Make a choice. Yep. Haven't done all the stand. 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 Yeah. You see, pick and stick. Just, I made my mind up. And same thing with your marriage. Let me say, being married is a wonderful thing. But that's not, that, that woman ain't going to give you complete happiness. You know why? Because she's got her own way of thinking. Now, men prefer a woman to be a little slave. Look at these ladies. Why don't you just do what I say? See, when I married Kathy, everything I said she did, it was wonderful. It was glorious. But now she said, I ain't that dumb, stupid girl you married 51 years ago. I said, I miss her. I liked her a lot. She said, he, she's dead. I said, I knew that for sure. But you know, we made up our mind to pick and stick. Pick and stick. Even through all my faults, through all her faults, she's got some. I have some. But we pick and stick. And you know, we use scripture all the time when she's mad, or if I'm mad at her, but if she's mad at me, Papa said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Right? So I tell Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. She go, I said, Kelly. She goes, what? Sun going down. Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh! Come on. She said, Daddy, I'm sorry. I said, I pardon you. <laughs> it's biblical. And the vice versa. When I'm mad as a horn about something, she'll go, Jesse, you old white-headed fool, sun going down. <laughs> sun going down. I said, Lord Jesus, forgive me, Kathy. I pardon you. We've had a lot of pardons in life. I don't know, it's sometimes an excuse to just stay where you are. See, some of y'all, God's told you to go to KCBC, but you're afraid to choose. You think you can't make it because your security is in yourself. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. When I went into the ministry back in, well, actually I preached my first message in 1976. Before I got saved, I, I made a lot of money in my life. I, mean, I was in the secular world. I understood the arts. And anyway, to make a long story short, I, um, but I didn't know nothing about the Bible. I, you know, you know, just, I knew a lot about religion, maybe a couple of Bible stories and things of that nature, but uh, that was about it. But I thought you had to be poor. Now, I was so willing to 
to just love God. Me and Kathy, we just gave all our money away. And it's amazing how much the churches wanted my money, but they didn't like the length of my hair. But they never said anything bad about the money I give to them. And I always said, if I'm bad, then my money must be bad. You see what I'm trying to say? So when I realized, I, I didn't know, see? So I said, well, I'm going to be humble. And, and, we, and I started reading the Bible. And I realized that, wait a minute, that's all lies. I mean, what are we going to do when we get to heaven? And you don't believe in prosperity. What are you going to do? Yeah. When you walk out there, you're going to walk on Gold Street. Ha! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now, Jesus, this ain't right. He's going to say, well, go to hell. <laughs> Go to hell because, you know, I'm not changing the goal. He thinks goal is concrete. Pearly gates, diamond, barrel, jasper, onyx, ruby. Good God. What are you going to do? You going to tell him you're not worthy? Or that he spent that money wrongly? You see how much we've been by Satan through the church. Can you actually believe that people think poverty is a blessing? They call it a vow of poverty. You don't think that's blind and silly and crazy? Why do you think all them people jumping across the Rio Grande to get here? What is, what is drawing these people to America? Prosperity. Now, you know, America's bad. Well, I don't see you jumping over to go to Guatemala. <laughs> Why don't you just go on with your bad self? I don't see that happening. I was watching them Olympics and that, that girl, that wrestler, make you just feel so good. I just love America. Gave me a chance. You want to fix the problems in the world? Let me just get blunt with you. Come here. Get involved with a believer's convention. Get involved with the word of faith where you understand the name of Jesus and then take that name and make everything bow to it and you'll fix this world. You see what I'm saying? But it has to be done as a unit. It has to be done as a unit. A car run, if it's a V8, all V8, the cylinders have got to be hitting on center the pistons and everything. It's got to be hitting for you to get the maximum speed you want out of that car. See? So when you say, I don't know, I sometimes an excuse to just say where you are when you should, where, where you are, it's just pick and stick. Write this down. Don't let critical people steal your joy or sideline your faith. See, that's what people were trying to do me over all that junk that happened four years ago about them jets. I was just trying to be honest with people. But you know what? The natural man receiveth not the things of God. They didn't understand a word I was saying. They just think I was being greedy. Mm -hmm. Oh, mad, mad at me about my house and all kinds of crazy stuff. Yet they all want to come look in it. <laughs> why do you want to come look in it? Why, if you don't like that, why do you want to look in it? Because <sighs> you do like it. <laughs> like one said, I don't think you ought to have the house. I said, no, you love my house. You don't like your house. That's your problem. Yeah. You love mine, but you don't like yours. That's why you mad at me. Mm. So don't let critical people steal your joy or sideline your faith. See, what shall I do for thee? So every day I go before God in my morning devotion. And I tell you what I say, Lord. And he say, what? He's right there, boy. I mean, he's just right there. And I begin to talk. And I said, Lord, thank you for the revelation of believing the unbelievable, receiving the impossible, simply because it's doable. So here we go. And I told the people in one of my session, morning, uh, afternoon session, one man said, how much money it take to shut your mouth? He mad at me. I said, $6,364,000,000. And a little change. Got a check? I'll shut up. Want to dance with me? Come on. You popping your lip? Come on. Boy, I mean, he was freaking out. He looked like the nutty professor. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> See, the wrong person was talking. You see what I'm saying? 
What are you going to do with all that? Preach the gospel. Write this down. You must awaken your conscience to believe above people's objections. You must awaken your conscience to believe above people's objections. God will overrule their objections. And that's exactly what he did for me, uh, Keith, on all that plain stuff. He overruled all their objections. Lock, stock, and barrel. Blessed is beyond our wildest dreams. Let me say it again. You must awaken your conscience to believe above people's objection. They always going to be objected about something. God will overrule the objection. He would just do it. I never forget when I was being hit on all that stuff. Man, that was ABC, CBS, NBC. I was the number one story in the world. Me. Why me? Oh, they were coming at me inside. I mean, it was just going to net. I just thought that was so funny that they would pay attention to me. And I, I, I was in New York. And when I got to church, the, I mean, the Good Morning America was there. I mean, the whole sidewalk was full of people. I mean, and cameras and all that kind of stuff. And I think Ann, Dan, Ann, Ann was there. Ann is not very tall, but she got mad at him. Ann started just reading their mail. I won't tell you, I don't know this man. And I said, whoa, back off there, Ann, back off. But you know, you don't tell Ann to back off. <laughs> I mean, Dan tried that and, well, that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> but she helped me, man. I mean, they were coming at me with, every, I mean, they were just wanting to destroy me. And I said, Lord, how do you want me to handle this? He said, you'll kill it with joy. So the joy of the Lord was my strength. I mean, so I said, when I got back to New Orleans, they were running me morning, noon, and night on Channel 4, Channel 6, Channel 8, and Channel 26. I mean, I was the number one story. So when we got home, I said, we eat, me and Kathy, we eat out twice a day. <laughs> Lunch and, and supper. Well, we call it supper, but it's dinner. So I said, let's go. She said, I said, get in the car, we're going. And I walked into that restaurant when I did. I mean, you could have heard an ant crossing the carpet. <laughs> Everyone's been stone quiet, boy. And they just looked at me. And I hear some say, that's that rich preacher. And I looked at him, I said, hello, everybody. How was your week? And they just looked, they didn't know what to say. I said, give me 30 seconds. Stone quiet. And I start talking. And I can put a lot in 30 seconds. And when I finished in that 30 seconds, I said, now that's the truth. They stood up, they started applauding. They started saying, them people, that made it lie like a dog. We know you. You don't do those things. I said, no, I don't. I will not back away from a fight. Not bragging about that. But a fight you want, a fight you're going to get. I just haven't done all the stand stand there for. You see what I'm saying? So when you understand it, that's what I'm talking. See, I awaken my conscience to, 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 over, to override people's objections in my mind because God's going to overrule them. It's like when a judge says overrule, and that's the end of that. You, you, you got to come back with something else. Because yeah. yeah. he overruled it. He said, that's my ruling. That's my ruling. And, but you got to go by what, if you believe in a country that, in, in the letter of the law. See, see so I, it didn't make any difference what you say, but it makes all the difference what God says. Yeah. Oh, can I say that, Lord? And he's never objected to me at all. I've been preaching 45 years, ladies and gentlemen. Some of you are not going to believe what I'm about ready to say, but God is my witness. I say it globally. He has never once told me no. Not one time. That's the truth. I am not lying. My daughter is going to be 50 years old in about a month and a half or something like that. She's such a blessing. I only have one daughter, one granddaughter. I have never told her no. Not one time. Her mother has, <laughs> but not me, because I'm not good at that. I'm not, I'm just not good. Uh, my wonderful granddaughter, we call her M&M, you know, she named, her name is Meredith Margot Walker. I, she's 13, and I've never told her no. I'm not good at that. In fact, she told me that the other day, she said, I like the way grandfather talks. <laughs> Jody called me and said, Daddy, you give everything she wants. I said, well, everything she says makes good sense to me. <laughs> so I went before the Lord. Now, you can believe this or not. I said, God, why haven't you told me no? He said, everything you say makes good sense. Say, get away from, listen to my human laugh, but get to the point where I'm living at. Get to the point of what I'm doing here. 
You know, I really think about things before I do them. I can talk a lot and say nothing. You understand what I'm saying? But I realized something, write this down. God always gives an overflowing. If you want to know it's God blessing you, you're always going to have more than enough. You're not going to just meet the need. God always gives an overflowing. Don't cap off the goodness of God. How do you do that? Limited thinking, limited faith, limited words. Let me say it again. God always gives an overflowing constantly. Don't cap off the goodness of God with limited thinking, limited faith, or limited words. I refuse to be limited. That's why you don't like diets. It aggravates you because it limits you. You want both uh, meatballs and spaghetti. You don't want a, a portion the size of your fist. You want them big babies here, right? It's amazing to me, people, when they used to have salad bars, so I'm on a diet, and they would get a platter this big. Yeah. They'd go through that salad bar. Then when they got to the dressing, which is the most fattening part, might be a whole keg, something about that big. Just pick it up. <laughs> and says, I'm dieting. <laughs> now that's limited thinking. That's limited faith. That's limited words. So I don't limit my words. I don't limit my thinking. I'm doing some things now and everything I've ever said, I've done. I don't mean that pridefully or arrogant. I have. If I give you my word, I'm going to do what I say. And if I can't, if something, I don't know, happened, I'm going to come to you. You ain't got to run me down, chase me down. I will tell you, but I will accomplish what I set my hand to do. So let me say it again. God always gives an overflowing. See, that's why he's saying, what shall I do for thee? Don't cap off the goodness of God with limited thinking, limited faith, or limited words. So you will never hear me say, well, you just can't do that. Well, no, you can do all things through Christ. All of it. I never forget years ago when I go to a bank and if I opened up an account, they wanted to give me a teapot. Remember that? Or a coffee pot, a little something. Or if you bought gas, they gave you some glasses. Remember that? You go to Shell Oil, you get a mug or something. Well, you don't get none of that no more, huh? You know, I've done business with the same bank and people for many, many years. Now when I walk into the bank, they want to take me to lunch. They want to take me to dinner. This is Chase, Chase Bank. They go, I said, uh, I said, can I ask the question? Yeah. Why do you want to take me to lunch? Well, sir, you're very nice. You're a man of substance. I said, oh, I was that 30 years ago. You just couldn't see it. You just see what's in those accounts. I said, but I was the same man 30 years ago. Why wouldn't would you ask me to lunch then? But you know, God 30 years ago says, can I take you to lunch? Because he saw my ability. My ability was his ability. Just looking for somebody to obey. See, so I refuse to limit my thinking. So I'm going to have seven low orbit and seven high orbit satellites. That's $6 billion. Been talking about that a good while. I ain't giving up on that because no independent company in the world should have the power to shut down the president of the United States. Uh -uh. None, none, none. Nobody should be able to do that. Thank you. Apple, all of them, well, what do you do? Pluck the apple. Other countries have done it. But see, you would never think that would ever happen. I hope to God it don't. But you push people enough. Because one word the government hates, and it's this simple word, Derek, no. Well, but we have the rule of law. No, you have the rule of power. You don't understand law. You move politically instead of morally. Mm. Thank you. Which gives me this next point. Don't let your destiny in receiving pass you by. Just keep saying it. Keep believing it. And then when you get it, don't rub it in people's faces. It's not given to you for that. It's given you to complete your destiny and reach your destination. 
It's amazing what God will do for you if you just let him. <clears throat> when I bought this plane, I really didn't know what I had because I'm not a pilot. So I flew over to Keith Moore. Keith, Keith's a pilot. We have the same kind of aircraft, you know. We Falcon guys. We just are. And so Keith says, hey, Jess, hey, Jess, can I live inside your plane? <laughs> sound like Keith, huh? Doesn't sound like Keith? See, when Keith get excited, his voice get high. I want to tell you all something here. I give him a hard time. He's such a blessing. He walked in there, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't know what I had. He said, Jesse, do you know what this is? I said, no. Jesse, and he started explaining that, and I just, I said, I want him to go all the way through the whole interior of the plane. Then I want him to walk around outside. We just talking, and Phyllis said, listen, we got to go to lunch. And, and, Keith, and Keith said, Phyllis, we're trying to figure something out here. He's showing some different, He's trying to help me, you know. I needed help. I, I do. I didn't know what I had. And, and Keith would say, push that button. Man, if things would start taking place. I said, wow. He said, you know how much that button cost? No, because I just paid the whole thing. But parts on planes cost a lot of money. So Keith helped me on that, see? Why? Because that plane has my destiny and my destination in it. To me, it's just a tool. I don't want to learn how to fly it. I'm not interested in that, but I wouldn't mind learning how to land it. <laughs> I think that's good wisdom. That if them boys of mine pass out, I ain't saying it's going to be in good shape, but I hope I can get it on the ground. <laughs> and you know, I, I've, I've had some hair raising things happen in plane, even when I flew commercial and everything. We were flipped upside down, hanging from, by the seat belts because the thunderstorm flipped the whole plane upside down between New Orleans and Alexandria. I'll never forget that. that I don't, can't remember. The, it was a prop plane, Keith. I don't know what kind, but he couldn't get over that, uh, that, that weather. So he tried to go. To, all of a sudden, it just encircled us. All of a sudden, we lost all sunshine. It was black. Couldn't see my hand. All of a sudden, bam, bam, you know, hitting those thermal. All of a sudden, whoop, we upside down. People were screaming and hollering at 14 people on that plane. I was one of them. That plane was supposed to go to Shreveport. Man, I just start praying, oh, and I'm hanging by my seatbelt upside down. I wanted to sing a song, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. <laughs> nobody knows. People were just hollering. I said, oh, Jesus. Now, ain't nobody criticizing me for saying Jesus. I heard people say Jesus. I, heard no, I didn't hear nobody say Buddha. I didn't hear nobody say Muhammad. I didn't hear nobody say Harry Krishna. I didn't hear nobody say any of that. I heard Jesus. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. Well, he flipped that plane back over, buddy. And them guys, what they were like, I mean, they were pale. And they were white, but they was pale. And I'll never forget when we landed in Alexander, that guy said, they only pay me $11,000 a year. I'm going to quit. I'm going to die for no $11,000. This is many years ago. But we had, I had to go to Shreveport and preach. Everybody got off that plane but me. I was the only one that went to Shreveport on that plane. They all rented cars. <laughs> I asked the Lord, I said, Jesus, he said, you can get on it. And we had the best weather from Alexander to Shreveport. Why? I won't let fear blind me. That's why some of you are not going to church, because you're blinded by fear. Come on. You say, that's your problem. But that COVID might get you. Well, COVID know where you live? <laughs> it know where you live? Your dog may have COVID. You don't know. <laughs> no idea. The way you live. Oh, okay. Here's a good point. If you miss this theme, what theme? What shall I do for thee? You will miss your opportunity and never reach your true destination. Because every dream you have has to have tools to complete it. It don't just happen. 
You have to have tools to complete it. If you miss this theme, you will miss your opportunity and never reach your true destiny. Well, Brother Jesse, how do I do that? By using God's language. I'm gonna give you another point real quick. To get in touch with God, you must use his language. The language of God. You have to know the difference between the voices of the Father, the voice of the Son, and the voice of the Holy Ghost. Real quickly, I, 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 I could preach a whole sermon on it. The voice of the Father, even though it's great power. I seen that when I was in heaven. Oh, son, power, energy like I've never seen. But the only way I can say is energy. Whoa, I mean, if you just move, annihilation. But his voice is still and small, but with massive amounts of authority. That's the Father's voice. Now, Jesus' voice is... Similar yet totally different, Derek. It is a voice of love. Hey, Jesse, mm. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Mm. I die for you. Now, the Holy Spirit's voice is a voice of purity. Mm. You got to watch that. Because, see, you can blaspheme the Father. Mm. And you can blaspheme the Son. But you cannot blaspheme the Holy Ghost. That's an unpardonable sin. Yes, sir. Yep. Why? That's purity at its extreme in a good way. Purity at its best. See, and you need that guidance. So I told the people early in one of my sessions, every decision I've ever made in my life, whether it was spiritual, physical, or financial, in my ministry or in my personal life, I founded the foundation of it on St. John 16, 13. How be it when the spirit of truth has come, he would guide me in all truth, not some truth. You know, I could have been an actor. That's what Robert Duvall said. Robert Duvall is a phenomenal actor. Yes, he is. You ever seen The Apostle? Yeah. You know, most of those lines are my lines. <laughs> you didn't know that? He flew to Lafayette, Louisiana. He was supposed to talk to me for 15 to 20 minutes. He said, there's a Cajun preacher. Someone told him, you need to go talk to him. So he flew and I thought we were just gonna talk for about you know, 10 or 15 minutes, four and a half hours later, we eating dinner, just talking. He said, you actually talk to Jesus? I said, I call him Jesus. He called me Jesse. He go, oh my God, can I use that? Can I use that? And the, the, the other guy was, I said, yeah. And you go see the apostle. He'll hear him say, I, I call you Jesus. You call me Sonny. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> All those things. He asked me about falling out in the Holy Ghost. He said, you know, we need Pentecostal church. They fall. I said, Mr. Duval, let me just, he said, just call me Bobby. I said, okay, Bobby. I said, you may not have a chance to fall down. I said, these people start singing in the Holy Ghost. You're allowed to get knocked on your can. <laughs> he went, ooh. I said, I'm telling you. you. I mean, you can shoot the move and I understand all, well, I don't understand all the things that they do to it. But I said, tell you, when that Holy Ghost comes, son, he don't care if you save or not save. He going to flow. He said, you know, I like you and my girlfriend loves you and T.D. Jakes. I said, well, thank, tell, thank. she said, I think she likes you more than Bishop. I said, well, I said, we're on the same team. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what I said? So tell her, get ready, get ready, get ready, get, 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 get ready. <laughs> we're on the same team. He offered me a part. I said, oh, I said, Mr. Duval, call me Bobby. I said, Bobby, I can't act. He said, oh yeah, you can. I know you can. I'm an actor, I'm a character. You can act. You could be a great comedian. And I told him that he blew his mind. I said, I'm not funny until the anointing of God comes on. He may not even remember if he's watching. He said, well, stay anointed. I said, look at it. Yeah. Stay in the character. You know what I'm saying? Get into the, stay in. I said, okay. But I said, oh, thank you. I, I could, I, 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 you know, thank you. I, was, but I said, Lord Jesus, I, I never have done that. Now, I did play covenant writer with Brother Copeland. If you remember me, I was a Gillespie. I was the meanest snake you ever saw in the movie. Y'all remember that? I mean, I killed several people in the movie drinking whiskey and I mean, just nuts. And I killed Ken, <laughs> Ken Copeland's grandfather. And, I mean, on the trail of tears and all kinds of stuff. I called him and uh, who's the fella from Tulsa? Uh, yeah, Willie George. I said, I just read this script. First time I ever saw a script in my life. I said, this guy's mean as a snake. Why do y'all want me to play this part? <laughs> and Brother Copeland and Willie said, uh, we know your past. <laughs> I 
that's true. <laughs> then when Brother Colton played that other thing about he was favoring them mafia guys, uh, the gentleman, he may be here tonight, he, he wanted me to be in the movie and play the boss of the bosses, the copy, do, 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 the copy boss. You know, he, he said, man, because I live that life. I understand La Cosa Nostra. I do. I got some friends of mine said, don't mess with Jesse. Jesse connected. <laughs> no, I, I know. Well, maybe I am a little bit. But, you know, I, but I mean, you know, it's just, I, I, I love people. I let my light so shine. I'm going to get off of that and go to something else. <laughs> Write this down. You must have fixed thoughts on who God is and what he said you can have. You must have fixed thoughts on who God is and what he said you can have. See, Romans 4, 19 through 21, Abraham, he's got fixed thoughts. He considers not, he staggers not, he's fully persuaded. Now that's fixed thoughts on what God said and what God, God said he could have. Consider not, stagger not, fully persuaded. That's still in operation today. What shall I do for thee? Oh, God can't give you that much. Yes, he can. See, that's why people don't believe in a hundredfold. Not a hundred times. A hundred times is mathematics. Yeah. Hundredfold is every time she folds, she doubles. Then the double doubles. Then the double, double doubles. Then the double, 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 double doubles. And then the double, you keep on. And the figure gets about as long as those line of chairs right there. Because it's beyond what you can possibly ask or think. See, but a fixed thought on that in the natural will, will not get that done. You, you got to let that flow out of your spirit. You need to, when you leave this convention, you ought to know how much more money you want in life. So you can go do the thing, because everything you're going to do has money in it. There ain't no such thing as bad money. You hear that? That's not true. Money put food in your belly today. It put clothes on your back today. See, it's the love of money that's bad. And the reason why it's bad, because you take God out of his place and you say, well, my money would be my security. Wrong. Wrong. They keep printing money the way they're printing. We'll be able to use $100 bills as wallpaper. It's going to become worthless. Brother Jesse, why do you think about Bitcoin? <laughs> I get more. Like, let me show you the difference between my generation and the generation of Bitcoin. Okay, look at y'all. My generation buys gold and silver. The younger generation buys Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin? What is it made of? It's digital currency. We know all that. Doesn't have the same restrictions as the, as the feds. We, we understand all that. What is it made of? Can you bite it? What is it made of? You think you could sell it? What it's made of? Can you sell gold? You see, that's why the Olympians, when they get that gold medal, I want to make sure there's some gold in this thing, at least gold plated or something. That's the difference. And I tell you what, all you need is one billionaire to tell you he likes it, and then he gets mad at him, boom. And you lose thousands and thousands of dollars because you got to understand, everybody's trying to make as much as they can Everybody selling it says it's going down. Everybody buy it says it's going up. You don't have to worry about that by God's system. Because everything God does goes up. Everything. He's not a downsided God. He don't do that, see? Why? Because he's fixed on the thoughts that he says and won't change. Not only can God do what you ask, believe God will do what, do what you ask. Not only can he, but believe he will do what you ask. See, a lot of people believe God can do it, but will he do it? Like, uh, you know, I know God heals, but would he heal me? Well, yes. Why would you think he's a respecter of person? Not only can God do what you ask, believe God will do what you ask. How you get this all done? I'm going to close with this. Make the word of God a habit. Make the word of God a habit. And you will know it's with, it is his will to do what you ask. How do you make the word of God a habit? Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not be ashamed. Rightly. Notice the word rightly. Dividing the word of truth. Which means if you don't study, is it possible you can wrongly divide the word of truth? Yes. 
But when you study and study with your spirit, not your intellect, and let God fill up your mind, which is the soul of man, of revelation that's, that's being dictated from the Holy Spirit to your spirit, to your mind, and into your body. So I know in whom I have believed. I'm not trying to convince myself. And I'm persuaded. I'll say this and then I'll close with this statement. This is about maybe three and a half years ago. I was in one of my conversations with the Lord. I was just having such a wonderful time. He's done so much for me. And I, I said, did I say thank you enough today? And he laughs about that, you know. And uh, I've been putting a pressure on the Father about coming sooner. I'm serious. Every day I said, now listen, I want you to consider this. That's, that's how I talk. I want you to consider this. Only the Father knows when Jesus comes. Jesus don't know, because Jesus would tell us. See, that's that love voice. Thursday, two o'clock, watch it. That's that love, you're gonna day, here you go day. And the other day, I, I got a chuckle out of the Father, which I thought was great. I said, if it be your will, that's the only prayer I pray, if it be your will. I don't pray that, I don't say those words, because I know the will of God. The will of God is the word of God. All I do is study it and I find it. But that, if it be your will, I'd like you to consider this. I'd like you to come in my lifetime. Not that I'm afraid to die. I'll cross that bridge when I get there. But I just like to go to heaven with my family. And, and then I give him an example. You know, Jesus sped up the time for Mary at the wedding of Cana. She said, uh, we need some wine. He said, woman, it's not my time. But see, a mama can put pressure on you, boy. Mama know how to put, she'd walk by Jesus and go. <laughs> walk off. Jesus just trying to have a day off, Derek. He's just at the wedding, just trying to, and then here come Mary. <clears throat> six miracles took place that day. Six jugs of water were turned into wine. You know the story. I said, so if it be your will. Oh, this is a revelation to me. And I want you to receive this. I said, I just like you to speed up the time. And I heard the father's voice. I know the difference. He went, <laughs> I said, ooh. I said, you consider it. <laughs> Think about it. I know you want to see me. I said, I'm ready to start my eternal work. Tell me what, I'm ready. Ready. To receive my assignment. Now he didn't tell me he's coming or not, but I tell you what, he chuckled, but not in a, a <laughs> stupid way or nothing like God don't do those kind of things. Well, about three and a half years ago, I was having a conversation with just enjoying myself. I have a beautiful home and it's filled with pleasant and precious things. Like Kathy said, use that scripture, you know. I like artwork, all kinds, porcelain. I have paintings and uh, all kinds of stuff in my own, just, just all kinds of stuff. And the Lord said, Jesse, I want to talk to you. I said, yeah. I didn't. He said, what do you want? I said, nothing. I got everything I can think of, Lord. He said, I want to give you something you, can, you want. I said, well, I don't, I don't know what I want. He said, well, when you find out, let me know. I said, okay. I said, but I don't really want nothing. I definitely don't need nothing. So a year passed, two years passed, three years passed. So we ended the third year going three and a half. And I happened to be in Honolulu, Hawaii, preaching for Art and Kuna Sepulveda at Word of Life Church. Great church, wonderful people. I just enjoy, I enjoy the church more than I do Hawaii. You know, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I've been there. It's water. Anyway, I went to Neiman Marcus there at the Alamoana Mall where Kathy shops. And a lot of other people. So it's a, it's a phenomenal mall. People been there, you know what I'm talking about. Well, I walked into Neiman Marcus and, and Kathy was down getting some shoes or something down there. I said, I'm gonna just walk around this store. She said, think about eating at Mariposa. That's a restaurant in Neiman Market. I said, it's too healthy. <laughs> what? I said, it's too healthy. Let's go where some cholesterol is. 
you know, something with some grease in it, something that tastes good a little bit, something. You know. We laugh. And so I walk and I walk into, I guess you say the housing se section or whatever. And I see this beautiful peacock by Jay Strongwater. Blue, gorgeous. Wanted $6,800 $6, for it. I thought, oh, that's beautiful. My God, look at that thing. Man, I like that. And this man come up to me, he says, how you doing? I said, uh, boy, that thing is pretty. He said, oh man, it's gorgeous. He said, uh, uh, are you considering buying it? I said, well, I hadn't thought. I just, just saw it in my own eyes. I said, sure, it's pretty. I like it. <clears throat> he said, you ought to see the golden one. I said, the golden one? He said, oh, it's got 13,000 Austrian crystals on it. He said, but they're all sold out. Now, why do people tell you that? <laughs> how, how they take your emotions up and just slam you down? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he said, but I, I thought I'd show it to you. I said, okay. So he pulls it out of the magazine and I see it now, and I see it in the brochure or whatever. He said, it's beautiful. I said, good Lord. Now I, I just glued, I thought, God. And I wasn't talking to God. I said, God, man, I, I'd like to have that. That's, that's a beautiful piece of artwork. He said, are, 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 you, are, are you coming back? I said, yeah, we just got to Honolulu. I said, we're going to be here for seven days. I said, he said, let me check around. Somebody might want to sell one of them. I said, oh, well, that'd be fine. Okay, so I went back the next day about two o'clock. He said, nobody wants to sell. But here's a number you need to call in Seattle. It's an 800 toll free number, which is Jay Strongwood, uh, one of the officers there. I call and this lady says, you just said the planners. I said, yes, ma'am. I watch you on television. I said, she said, are you interested in a golden eagle? I said, oh, I said, well, I saw the blue one. Oh, she said, that's beautiful, but it's nothing compared to this golden eagle. I said, well, yeah, I'd love to see one in person, you know. But I said, this gentleman here said, nobody wants to sell them. She said, well, Mr. Strongwater himself has one. Of course, he would never sell it. You know, he takes the first one. I said, well, where is it? She said, it's in New York. I said, well, I'm going to be in New York two weeks from now. I said, would he mind if I just flew over there and just looked at it? I know I can't buy it. Oh, well, you can't buy it. He never sells his. I said, I understand that. It's all sold out, see. So two weeks later, I flew to New York, found out his address there in Manhattan. And I had my, uh, my pilots with me. We walked up there. Eli was with me. And we walked in, and this is where the buyers come from all over the world and pick pieces, you know, who ship all over the world from Hong Kong to whatever. And I'm looking around. I thought, my God, look at all this stuff. And he walks up to me, he says, hello. I'm Jay Strongwater. Are you Jesse DeFlanis? I said, yes, I am. He said, I've seen you on television. I said, yes, sir. Uh, he said, I heard you were interested in the Golden Eagle. He said, it's one of my finest. He said, I think I did my best. I said, well, according to the brochure, I said, I ain't never seen nothing like this. Okay. He said, would you like to see it? I said, oh, yeah. So he takes me in his room on the side. And there it is. You know, the peacock with his, you know how a peacock uh, spreads his wings out? And there's this other female peacock. I said, who is she? Uh, that, that's his girlfriend. <laughs> Man, that thing's beautiful too. Good Lord. I mean, just silver and jewels. And I said, good God Almighty, look at this thing. He said, I still think I did my best. I said, well, how, if, can I ask how much the golden eagle? He said, well, it sells for 29,000 with tax. I said, how much is this girlfriend? And he said, uh, I think it was seven or 8,000. No, it was 29. <laughs> 37,000 with tax for both of them. He said, it's a, actually, it's a very good deal. Of course, it's not for sale. I said, well, Mr. Swan, Mr. Strongwater, I, if you ever heard of Jay Strongwater, anybody know what I'm talking about? You see him in jewelry stores and, you know, enamel and jewel, you know, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful stuff. He says, um, and then he said, man, you really like it. I said, oh yeah. I said, I've got a lot of uh, artwork and we talked a little bit about that. And he does this. I'm not saying anything. I'm just, he said, you know, I've never done this in my life. I said, I know. I know. Would you like to have mine? Would you like to buy mine? I said, Oh, that would even be better. It'd be worth more because it's yours. He said, that's right. 
He said, I've never done this before. I'd love for you to have it. I said, sir, I'll take the girlfriend too. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't separate lovers. <laughs> What's this? He said, okay, well, we'll ship it to you. I said, you don't need to ship it to me. I have my own plane. Well, you have your own plane? I said, yes, sir. I got a van downstairs. Put it in the box and I'm taking it out of here. It will be in my white ballroom in my house by 3.30 this afternoon. And I said, Mr. Strongway, I don't know how much you sold in your life. There ain't nobody going to appreciate more than me. And he did it. He said, let me sign it. Oh, I mean, he said, I mean, it's worth nothing because it's his. Okay. Boom. We flew to New Orleans, boy. I put that thing on, uh, and it's, it's, I have a plantation home. And in those days, they would present the girls, they, would they had ballrooms and they would move the furniture out and present the girls like debutantes and whatever, you know, and, and they would with those beautiful dresses. And, you know, anyway, to make a long story short, I put it on that fire pit. I thought, good God, I'm out. look at this thing. So I paid them, all right? 34,000 plus tax, me 37,000. I said, man, I need to go to the office. So I got back to the office the next morning. Pia works for me. She's a supervisor. They all call me boss. Boss. And that morning I had done my um, um, devotion. And the Lord said, look like you found what you wanted. I said, did you see it? That's how I talk to God. Did you see it? He said, I saw it. It is beautiful. I said, man, you got to do one like this in heaven. My God, this thing is gorgeous. I said, did you see the girlfriend? He said, I saw the girlfriend too. <laughs> now you can say what you want. You don't have to believe it. That's how I talk to God. I got a relationship and a fellowship with God. So I said, so I go to pick. She said, well, Jesse, there's a man from South Africa wants to give to our ministry. I said, well, that's nice. And she said, he gave a check for $75,000. I said, oh, what a blessing of God. Hallelujah. And she said, but he also gave another check. He said, this is for you personally. I said, personally? Yeah. You, you mean me physically? Yeah. I said, how much? She said, $37,000. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I went, and my mind went, that's what that eagle, I mean that peacock and his girlfriend cost. And the Lord said, I told you I'd give you what you want. Yeah. It didn't cost me a dime, Derek. It's sitting in my house right now. You know why I got it? Because I asked. Now, what are you going to ask for? Now, that's something physical. It can be spiritual. It can be financial. It can be all three. What are you willing to do? Now, what? You know, I could have, oh, I paid, uh, to the IRS. I paid taxes on the money. I don't have a problem with that. I'm a very high paying taxpayer. People say preachers don't pay tax. I don't know about them, but I do. <laughs> oh, Lord. But anyway, you know, I used to get ag aggravated about my taxes until Brother Copeman sat me down and said, Jesse, sow it as a seed. Sow it as a seed. <laughs> yeah, you're riding on roads. That they, well, yeah. Yeah. And he said, with a good heart. Okay. It took me a couple of years to get by that one, Derek. I'll tell you what. I mean, and the Lord said, did you like it? I said, I love it. It was something I wanted. Stand to your feet. I want you to lift your hands up and from the bottom of your heart, I want you to tell God what you want. Start now. Out loud, I don't care if it's spiritual, physical, financial, whatever. Don't, don't limit it with limited words. Limited faith or limited thinking, you might want your home paid off. And the money that the house is worth, that's no problem with God. Heavenly Father, I decree and declare everyone watching, as well as all those that are physically here today, you told me to preach this and tell them that your warehouses are full, that you want to empty it out on your family, which is here, and those that are watching through that live stream. 
Father, I ask you to do this and let testimony after testimony begin to take place all over this United States, all over the cities they live in, other counties, other parishes, wherever, whether they're in urban areas or city, whatever, Lord. Let people realize all you want to do is be a father blessing his children. Father, I thank you for it. I believe you for it. I call it done. And Satan, I get great pleasure in telling you, get under these people's feet that what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. We bind you today. You will not hinder this. You will not stop this. And Lord, if people have lost things during the COVID or whatever, catch that thief and he returns it sevenfold in the substance of his house. Lord, I can't thank you enough for it. Now, Lord, people are presenting that to you today. I know you feel good about it. Lord, you did it for me. I know you would do it for these people because you're no respecter person. God, I can't thank you enough for it. I ask you to bless each and every person here today in Jesus name. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to receive? Are you expecting to receive? Before, before the convention's over, 